Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Ford Ranger, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Demco Stain Play Braking System with the wireless coach link monitor. So probably one of the most important things uh, when you're looking at a braking system is how it's going to perform. You know, how's it gonna feel and uh, react whenever you're flat towing down the road. And a braking system is a really important component. What that's designed to do is apply the brakes in your towed vehicle whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome. Uh, that way the motorhome isn't solely responsible on not only slowing itself down, but your vehicle too. Um, that way you're not putting all this extra wear and tear on your motorhome, you don't have this heavy vehicle behind you, uh, and relying on your motorhome to do all the stopping. You know, gripping that wheel tight, pushing on that brake pedal. The braking system is going to resolve a lot of those issues. Um, the motorhome will no longer be responsible for slowing everything down because the braking system is going to be operating your tow vehicle's brakes. So it really does make a huge difference uh, when it comes to safety and just overall making a more predictable stop. So talking about the product is one thing, but actually using it is a whole different story. So let's go ahead, hop inside the motorhome, hook up our tow vehicle, drive it around and see how it does. We hopped in the motorhome, got our uh, tow vehicle set up behind us, put it in tow mode, and we can take it for a little spin. Now, unfortunately, can't get up to highway speeds and things like that, but what we can do is just kind of some slower driving and see how uh, it reacts. We should be able to feel uh, that vehicle behind us and, and everything else. Um, on the same note, we shouldn't really feel it pushing us around when we're hitting the brakes. So I'll kind of just get to a cruising speed and just kind of gradually uh, hit the brakes like you normally would. Let's say if maybe you're hitting a stoplight or, or something like that. So I'll go ahead and gain a little bit of speed here and hit our brakes. And really smooth, actually. Uh, felt like we really weren't pulling a vehicle behind us. Uh, everything felt smooth, and it feel like we we're getting pushed around, or uh, you know, the vehicle was dragging. Nothing like that. So I think the braking system is uh, doing a great job so far. With that said, we can kind of swing around here, and I think this time what I'm going to do is pick up some speed and kind of make more of an aggressive stop uh, to see if it reacts quick and does uh, what it's intended to do. So let me straighten out. We'll get going here. I'll try to pick up a little more speed this time. And I'll kind of hit this brake pedal a little bit harder this time. And we came to a stop a lot smoother and faster than I thought actually. We have a heavy motorhome, relatively heavy uh, towed vehicle, and so I think it did a great job. Like I said, everything felt smooth. It felt like we were just one unit coming to a complete stop and not forcing our vehicle to stop almost or, or pulling it behind us or anything like that. So feels like the braking system is doing exactly what it's intended to do. So I think one of the reasons the braking system performed the way it did is the fact that it is proportional. So more or less what that means, the harder you apply the brakes in your motorhome, the towed vehicle is going to do the same thing. So that just really helps bring it to a smooth and predictable stop like we just experienced. So to kind of give you an example, on what that proportional means, more or less, is let's say if we're kind of just coasting and we see a red light up in the distance and we kind of just, you know, halfway hit our brakes, gradually apply them. Our towed vehicle's gonna do the same thing. On the other hand, let's say if maybe we're on the interstate and there might be an accident or some traffic up ahead and we kind of have to make more of an aggressive stop and really kind of push down on that brake pedal and, uh, and kind of stand on it a little bit. The towed vehicle is going to do the same thing. So it's really just gonna make your driving experience uh, that much more pleasant. 
So one of the big things that really helps separate this braking system from many of the others is the fact that we have this wireless coach link here. And this is really gonna come in handy. Um, most of the braking systems don't utilize this. Uh, a lot of them simply just have a small light that is attached to the towed vehicle that illuminates letting you know when the braking system uh, is functioning. And that's great, but a lot of times you can't really see that light. Um, if your motorhome doesn't have an observation camera, it's really difficult to see. And even if it does, at least in my experience, uh, if you're looking through that camera, especially during the daytime, it's still kind of tricky. And this solves that issue. So this is going to let you know right here, clear as day when you're driving down the road, that your braking system is indeed operating uh, and depressing the brake pedal. So to give you an example of that, whenever your braking system's on and you're flat towing and you push down the brakes, the lights are going to illuminate red. You let off the brakes and it's going to be plain. Nothing's gonna happen. There's also another feature too. When you apply the brakes and it illuminates red, after about seven seconds or so, you're gonna get an audible noise as well. Now, as I said, whenever you're hitting the brakes and you see those lights illuminate, after a few seconds, we're gonna hear that buzzer. So you have an audible note letting you know. Now, the whole purpose of that buzzer is to act as kind of a backup device, um, which is perfect on these really sunny days like this. Uh, sometimes it's not super easy to see the, the letters uh, lighting up red, letting you know that the brake pedal is being depressed. So uh, it's nice to get a couple of different options there. Um, if you don't want that buzzer or uh, whatever the case may be, the good news is, if you look on the back, there's actually a switch there. So you can turn it off, um, drive around, whatever you wanna do, and you always have the option to turn it back on. So really convenient at the flip of a switch. Now what's great about this is the fact that we're going to have no false readings. So what I mean by that is a lot of these other braking systems that use that kind of that traditional indicator light that's connected to the towed vehicle, what can happen is um, a lot of times the way you have to wire those up is that indicator light is going to illuminate uh, more or less just when the system activates. Well, that's really only telling you half the story. You could have an issue with the connection down at your brake pedal and your towed vehicle and see that light coming on and you're gonna think it's working properly. That's because it's not actually tied into that brake pedal switch itself. And with this setup here, the transmitter that our coach link receives the information from is physically tied into our factory towed vehicles brake pedal switch. So when that switch activates or that brake pedal actually moves, that's when this is going to illuminate. So you can have 100% confidence whenever this is illuminating that your brake pedal is actually being depressed and working like it should. So whenever you are ready to flat tow and you're all hooked up, all you're gonna have to do is come to your G-Force controller, which is this box right here, and turn the braking system on. That's really all there is to it. Uh, when you're done flat towing, you just turn it off. Uh, so as I said, really straightforward. The controller is also going to have an adjustment knob, which is this here, and that's going to allow us to adjust the sensitivity. This is something you really only have to do once and kind of find that sweet spot and let it be, but it's still nice to have that option. So let's say, for example, uh, if you feel like the brakes in your towed vehicle were applying too soon, what you could do is make that adjustment to make it less sensitive. If let's say um, you felt like the braking system wasn't doing a good enough job of stopping the vehicle, it was kind of delayed or late, you could make it uh, less sensitive. So it gives you that adjustability there. And the G-Force controller itself is also gonna play a part in determining when to apply your towed vehicle's brakes. And that's because there's an inertia type sensor in here. So this is gonna detect movement. So the braking system is gonna use that piece of information as well as the brake light signal from your coach 
to determine when to apply the brakes. So for example, say if you're driving down the road, hit the brakes in the motorhome, braking system's gonna see that brake light signal, it's going to communicate with the inertia switch here in your G-Force controller and say, okay, we're moving, we're applying the brakes, we need to hit the brakes in our towed vehicle. So it'll do that for you. On the other hand, let's say if you're at a stoplight or just in a stationary position with your foot on the brake, the braking system will see that brake light signal from your motorhome, but it'll talk to our inertia switch here and say, okay, we're not moving. We don't need to apply the brakes in our towed vehicle because we're sitting still. So that's really convenient. You know, you're gonna reduce the wear and tear on your braking system, and not to mention your towed vehicle's brakes as well. And that way you're just not applying the brakes in your towed vehicle for no reason. So the way that the braking system is actually going to apply your vehicle's brake pedal is by using this actuator cylinder here. So this is going to be connected to the brake pedal arm. It has a cable out of the back of it and connects to the vehicle's firewall as an attachment point. There's going to be a line that runs to it from the braking system operating unit. That's going to be a air pump more or less. And so whenever uh, the system turns on, what's going to happen is the brake pedal is going to be depressed by this activate or this actuator cylinder activating. So really convenient. You know it's uh, sturdy and stable and not to mention a lot of times you can mount this relatively high up that way it's out of sight and out of the way whenever you're just driving around town like you normally would. So with this system being permanent, uh, it's really going to be convenient. You know, all this stuff is already in place. Uh, just to kind of compare it to a portable type braking system. Those work great and definitely have a time and a place to be used. The downside with them is that you're going to have to set it up every single time. You got this uh, big unit that sets in the floorboard here and you're going to have to clamp it around your brake pedal arm uh, every time you want to use it, remove all that stuff when you're done using it, and store it away. So the permanent type system definitely has an advantage there, especially when it comes to ease of use. So one of the things I really do like about this system is that the actual main operating unit, which is this here, is relatively small. You know, it doesn't take up a ton of space. It's about as small as it could get. And that's very important, uh, especially in today's newer vehicles, you usually don't have a ton of room. Everything's just kind of crammed in. Well, I will say I've installed a ton of these braking systems and I've yet to come across a vehicle uh, that it doesn't fit there you, or you can't find a spot to put it. I always end up finding a spot, whether it be really popular vehicles that are often flat towed or kind of those not so popular vehicles that you don't see all that often. So regardless on what you have, uh, you should be able to find a spot to mount up your operating unit. So the kit is also going to come with a safety device, which is called the breakaway switch, which is this component here. And this is gonna be mounted to your towed vehicle. You're gonna attach a tether to it, which will go to your motorhome's hitch. And what this is gonna do, in the event of an unlikely disconnect, this pin will get pulled out and that's going to turn on or activate the braking system. So it'll apply the brakes in your vehicle and help bring it to a safe stop. Also with the coach link, whenever this is pulled, the coach link will illuminate also. So it'll let you know that your braking system is activating. So if you're just going down the road and you're not on the brakes and that light comes on, um, you definitely need to check things out. So kind of a win-win there and definitely a safety feature uh, that would give me a little more peace of mind. So there's gonna be five main components that you're gonna to need to flat tow your Ranger down the road safely. First one's gonna be your base plate. And that base plate's going to provide us with a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook up our tow bar. A tow bar is gonna be that second component. And this is gonna be that physical link that connects the front of your Ranger to the back of your motorhome. The third main component is going to be safety cables. And those are there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. These are gonna keep everything connected to each other. The fourth main component is going to be tow bar wiring. 
and the wiring is going to transfer the lighting signals from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Ranger. That way it'll keep you safe and legal. And last but not least is a braking system. And what the braking system is going to do is apply the brakes in your Ranger whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome, and that's gonna help bring you to a more predictable stop. And there is just a couple more things I would suggest using in conjunction with those five main components just to make your overall experience that much better. One of them is what's called a brake light relay. And I recommend that because with these Rangers, let's say if you have on your turn signal and you hit the brakes at the same time, with the Rangers, what's gonna happen is the turn signal flashing on the back of your truck is gonna be overridden by the motorhome's brake signal. So uh, people aren't gonna know kind of what's going on. They're gonna see the brake lights on the Ranger and potentially your turn signal on the motorhome and uh, things can kind of just can get confusing that way. Another component is what's called the charge line. And what that's gonna do is more or less kind of trickle charge or maintain your Ranger's battery whenever you're flat toning it. And that's because a lot of these braking systems use the Ranger's battery power. So by using a charge line, you're going to avoid uh, potentially having a drained or dead battery whenever you go to disconnect and drive your truck around. There is one thing that I do want to mention, and that is the use of a high-low adapter. And in our case, we actually don't need it, but still something I figured I'd bring up. And the use of a high-low adapter, what that's going to do is make sure that your tow bar is riding nice and level. And so to figure out if you would need that, you want the measurement here from the center of your hitch or your pinhole on your base plate to the ground to be within three inches of the measurement here on your motorhome hitch from the pinhole down to the ground. Uh, in our case, on our base plate, that's gonna measure about 15 and a half inches. That's kind of just a reference, keep in mind, you know, if your truck has different size tires or lift kit, something like that on it, that measurement could vary, but something that I figured I would throw out and if you do end up needing a high-low adapter, we have multiple different sizes and so on right here at eTrailer. So at the end of the day, a great braking system option for the Ford Ranger. It works out real well and works exactly the way it should. Now, as far as the installation goes, uh, it is pretty involved. You know, there's a lot of components that you need to hook up, but the good news is you only have to do it once. And from there on out, everything's gonna be super easy to use. So. Uh, set aside a little bit of time to get the job done and as long as you stay patient shouldn't really give you a whole lot of issues speaking of which let's go ahead pull into the shop and get it on together now to begin our installation we need to first mount up all of our major components here on the vehicle side and we're going to start with our main operating unit which i've placed right here uh, kind of behind our headlight so here's how i secured our main operating unit now I want to mention everything's pretty tight in here so you want to make sure to try to get that unit as far over uh, towards the outside of the vehicle as possible but still give yourself enough room that way you can get your battery removed uh, in the future if you ever need to change it. With that being said though I simply just secured this to our core support here using three self tapping screws. And with three of them in there it is very solid and we don't have to worry about it going anywhere. Now, just to kind of give you another look, I say you want to get this as far over as possible because you want to make sure to give yourself enough room to be able to hook up your lines and your wires here on this side of your operating unit. Now we can move down to our grill area and mount up and hook up our breakaway switch, which is this component right here. Now on this vehicle, worked out really well. There's actually a factory bracket that's kind of part of our bumper beam, and there was a pre-drill hole in it and it's about perfect for this breakaway switch. So I just used a nut and a bolt and a washer and secured the breakaway switch to it. And since we're right here, we can go ahead and get it hooked up. So we're gonna have a black wire and an orange wire coming off that breakaway switch. And just kind of zip tied it down along through here. And then I was able to hook it up to some wires that comes from our main operating unit. So the blue wire from our main operating unit will get connected to the black wire from our breakaway switch using a buck connector. The brown wire from our main operating unit will get connected to the orange wire from our breakaway switch, again using a buck connector. 
Now what I like to do is add an additional length of wire here, kind of double them up in this one end of the bug connector. And this wire here is going to run up to our battery where we can uh, get a fuse holder attached to it and that will end up being our power supply for our operating unit. Well with that being said, the wires are simply just going to come right up kind of through here and they'll come out right behind our headlight where our operating unit is mounted up. So here's where that extra wire I ran came up and as I mentioned uh, we need to hook it to a fuse holder. So here's the fuse holder. It comes with the kit. First thing you want to do, make sure that fuse is not installed. That's the very last thing we'll do once we have everything hooked up. But we're going to cut that in half and strip back the ends of the insulation. That way we can put some connectors on the end there. I like to give these a good twist, just to ensure that the wires are nice and tight. Give us a good connection. So one end of the fuse holder is going to receive a butt connector. So that just slides over the bare end of the wire and crimps down. Now I am using a heat shrink butt connector, uh, which don't come included. The regular type ones do, and those will work just fine. I do like the heat shrinks a little better though, because the ends seal up. Give us a little more uh, protection. You can also grab these here at each trailer. The other end of the buck, or the fuse holder rather, is going to receive a ring terminal. So it'll work the same way. It just gets crimped on. And as far as the other end of our buck connector is concerned, that's going to get connected to that wire that we ran up here. So we'll slide that over. Get it crimped down, and since I use that heat shrink, I'll grab my heat gun and seal up the ends. Now that our end here is all sealed up, we can hook this up to the positive battery terminal. So there's quite a few uh, studs here. I prefer to use this one because uh, there's no factory equipment or wires going to it. With that being said, I'm going to remove that nut using a 10 millimeter socket. We can then take a ring terminal, slide it over the stud, and tighten our nut back down. Now we can move inside of our vehicle here on the driver's side kind of underneath of our dashboard and mount up a few uh, more components the first one that we're going to focus on is this g-force controller which is this box right here so pretty straightforward i just use the provided screws to uh, secure it to our kick panel here there's really a couple things you have to watch out for when you're mounting this up first one being you want it to face the direction of travel so the knob here, the adjustment knob, you always want that facing towards the front of the vehicle. And you also want to get it as level as possible. So not only this way, but also this way as well, if that makes sense. So this kick panel spot worked out real well. Uh, it checked all those uh, requirements and easy to get to and out of the way for the most part. Now what we can do is mount up our wireless transmitter, which is this right here. So this is best to put in this area um, that way it'll have uh, better communication with the device inside of our RV actually and with this um, what you can do is use some sticky tape put on the back of it and I just kind of tucked it up behind the wires there uh, and honestly just being behind those wires it stays nice and tight and out of the way and in the proper place that we need it to be mounted then we can move to our brake pedal arm and mount up our actuator cylinder so this just clamps around our brake pedal arm. So that wire that comes out off the cylinder, that's gonna get connected to an anchor point here that attaches to our firewall. So on these Rangers, it's really convenient. Uh, if you cut this carpet back, there's actually a stud right here that is secured to the firewall. So it makes for a perfect and easy anchor point. Now you will have to pick up a nut to go over that stud 
which you will have to get on your own. Uh, I do recommend using a nylon lock nut, that way you don't have to worry about it backing off. But you're simply just going to thread that on there. And then when you mount up your cylinder, you want this cable to be as straight as possible. That way when the brakes are applied, this doesn't get in a bind or kinked up, anything like that. At this point, we can get hooked up what we can while we're down here underneath the dash. Uh, we're going to start with our transmitter. So that's going to have a gray cable here that splits off into a small red and black wire. The black wire is going to be a ground, so I attach that to uh, an additional piece of white wire, which I ran into the engine compartment where we have everything grounded. So I'll show you that in a minute. The red wire, um, this is going to get connected to the brake light switch. So that runs kind of around and gets connected up here. So here's our brake light switch wire. It's the purple and white one. Uh, and I join that in conjunction with our brake light relay, which these rangers do require. So that's where it gets connected there. Now what we can do is grab our airline tube and get that plugged into our actuator cylinder. So when you do this, you want to make a nice, clean, straight cut on here. So you want to use a tool like this, utility knife, or even a tubing cutter. Don't want to use a regular pair of snips. This will kind of kink the line up and possibly cause a leak. So you get that cut nice and clean. And this is just a quick connect. So all you're going to have to do is more or less just push that right into the fitting there. That's really all there is to that. Now that we have that plugged in and our wires in here connected, we can route them through a factory grommet up here in this area into the engine compartment where we can get everything else hooked up. So here's where our wiring comes out. Our ground wires kind of stay along the edge here, so we'll just start with them. So the white G-Force controller wire, as well as the white wire from our transmitter, run right along through here where there is a factory ground stud. So I removed that nut using a 13 millimeter, crimped on a ring terminal, and simply just connected them to there to supply us the ground that we need. So the rest of our wires, as well as our nylon air tubing, kind of run along through here. And here's where we have a lot of our connections made. So we'll start with the G-Force controller wires. So we have the yellow and the green from our G-Force controller. Those get tapped into our diode wires here. So here's our green diode wire, green diode wire. The green G-Force controller wire gets doubled up there and one into the buck connector and uh, connected together. Same deal for our yellow. We got our yellow diode wire, yellow G-Force controller wire here. Double it up into the said buck connector. So that leaves us with two more G-Force controller wires. This red one here, as well as the black one. And these are going to get connected to the same color wires coming out of our main operating unit. Again, I just use a buck connector. So red G-Force wire goes into the red wire from our operating unit. Black G-Force wire goes into the black wire from our main operating unit as well. As far as our nylon air tube goes, that just runs along through here and comes to our operating unit. So it just plugs right in the same way that it plugged into our actuator cylinder. Now when you do this, uh, it is kind of tight here, so make sure that the line, you know, has a nice swoop in it. You don't want it at a severe angle where it'll cause a kink or anything like that. So this is set up just right and plugs right in. Now at this point we can start to get our vacuum line hooked up. Now I want to mention I'm using this uh, adapter. It doesn't come included, um, but it does make it a lot easier. The stuff that they give you in the kit, you can make work. However, like I said, this is simplify things and you can pick up an adapter uh, like this here at eTrader. With that being said, the way it's going to work is this end is going to plug into our brake booster. Our vacuum line from our operating unit is going to get plugged in here. And then we're going to need to tie into our factory vacuum line here on this end. So uh, with that being said, if we have, we'll just set this off to the side for now. We're going to take our check valve that comes included 
And since this is way too small to fit inside the line and keep everything sealed, what I've came up with, you just cut off a small piece of the vacuum line, push that over it. That's gonna kind of fill that gap up and make it much thicker. So we'll push it on both ends. And then we can push that into our hose there. It's nice and tight. Everything's gonna be sealed. And when we do this, we wanna make sure that the black portion of the check valve, you can see how one side's black, the other side's kind of a greenish white. We'll make sure that the black side is gonna face towards the engine when we hook this up. So black side towards the engine, the greenish white side towards our brake booster. So I'll get that one in. I'll take another piece of tubing here and push it over this side. And now what we're able to do is move to our factory vacuum line and get this all hooked up. So before we actually plug this in to our brake booster, I'm gonna take the length of included vacuum line push that over the T portion. It's just a little bit easier while we have it disconnected from everything. And if you look right there, this is our factory vacuum line that plugs right into that brake booster. And so I've just pulled that out, kind of push out of the way, and this is gonna plug in there. So kind of get it worked around our wires and everything else here kind of a tight fit. So now that we have that plugged in, we're gonna to need to connect our factory line to it. And so that's gonna require us to cut it. So I'm going to kind of eyeball the length that we're gonna need here and trim it off. Get that piece cut off. And then we can swing it around. And plug that into the line. Into our rubber hose. So I went ahead and routed our vacuum line here. Kind of up and around, I just looped it all the way around like this that way we didn't have any real tight bends in it or kinks or anything and secured it along the way with some zip ties where it plugs right into the check valve that's attached to our operating unit and it works the same it just plugs right over that fitting so now that we have everything hooked up we can come here to our fuse holder take the included uh, fuse push that into the holder and then we want to just do a quick basic test of our system here on the vehicle side, just to make sure that this is all uh, good before we kind of clean up all of our wiring and things like that. So what you want to do is go inside, turn your G-Force controller into the on position. So just a real quick way to tell to make sure everything's kicking on is if we pull our breakaway pin out, the operating unit should kick on and apply the brake pedal. So we hear it kick on, it makes that audible noise. You push the pen back in, it turns off. Now, once the vehicle is complete and we know that it's working, we can move into our motor home and set up our monitor. And this is super straightforward. You're just gonna set this uh, where you want it and where you can see it, usually on your dashboard or something like that. And then we're just gonna have a 12 volt uh, plug here. So this is gonna plug right into your power port and really that's all there is to it. Now just to make sure this is working properly, what you're gonna do is turn your G-Force controller on, hook your vehicle up to the motorhome, and you can apply the brakes. This will illuminate red, and if you hold the brakes down for about seven seconds, we should get that audible noise. To let off the brakes, the noise turns off, the lights turn off as well, and we know this is functioning properly. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco 
stay and play supplemental braking system with the wireless coach link monitor on our 2020 Ford Ranger.